Welcome to this guided practice for chemistry on moles and molar mass. So the first thing we want to know is what is a mole in chemistry? And so a mole in chemistry um, is a quantity of substance. So a mole is a quantity of substance. And that quantity is equal to Avogadro's number, which is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd pieces. Okay. And so we call that number Avogadro's number. So you might be asking yourself, well, what would these pieces be? And we will kind of define um, each one of these pieces a little bit better as we go. But pieces could be one of really three things at this point. Um, of course, just like a dozen, you can have a dozen eggs, but you could have a dozen friends or whatever. So this number is really just the number of pieces. But the pieces in chemistry that we use are going to be... Um, atoms for individual elements okay they could be molecules for um, what we would call covalent compounds or covalently bonded which we will work on a little bit later, or we could have formula units. And formula units are going to be for ionically bonded substances, so ionic compounds. We will come back later and do a little more work with those different types of compounds. Um, if you're ever not sure, you can always just use pieces to demonstrate that. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at figuring out molar mass. And so you want to have your periodic table next to you. And on the periodic table, we have mass values for our different elements. I like to round those, especially at the, the general chemistry or honors chemistry level to um, the whole number. I just feel like it makes it a little bit easier. I can remember some of those whole numbers. So if we look on the periodic table, of elements and we look at carbon, carbon has an atomic number of six, but it has a mass value of 12.01 grams or grams per mole. And so we're gonna represent that as 12 grams per mole. Now, if I have 12 grams per mole of, or 12 grams total of carbon, then I'm going to have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. Okay. And now we can look for hydrogen on the periodic table. If you look at hydrogen on the periodic table, it is 1.008 or 1 gram per mole. We'll just round to that whole number. And again, if we had 1 gram of hydrogen atoms, we would have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd hydrogen atoms. Oxygen, we have, if we look on the periodic table, we have 16 grams per mole. So if we had 16 grams or one mole of oxygen, we would still have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd oxygen atoms. So notice that the mass might change, but the number of atoms, regardless of the substance, will always be Avogadro's number. So we might... Um, need to know the molar mass for different molecules or different compounds. And so we're going to take a look at that with this next example. We have carbon dioxide. And so we have carbon plus we have two oxygens. So let's add two times oxygen. Okay, two times oxygen. And the reason we know that is this little subscript of two 
after the oxygen is representing that there's two oxygens. And so I can just look on the periodic table again, and I can say, okay, we, we had 12 grams for carbon, and each oxygen was 16 grams, so we're gonna have two times 16 grams. And so when I add these up, two times 16 gives me 32 plus 12, I get 44 grams per mole. Now even though I have 44 grams per mole, I know that I still have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. This is a covalent compound, you don't need to know that yet, um, but CO2 molecules or just CO2, I'm going to say MLQS is more my shorthand for molecules. Okay. We can do the same thing for um, methane here, so CH4. And I'm kind of working all the process out. I definitely expedite this when I'm working on this, but I'm going to show stepwise what we do. So we have carbon plus we're going to have four times the mass of hydrogen. Okay, so four times hydrogen, four times one gram for hydrogen, plus that 12 grams for carbon. So it gives me 12 plus another four, and so we end up with 16 grams per mole. Again, we still have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd. Um, CH4 molecules or molecules of CH4. Water is one that we consistently use a lot in chemistry for a variety of different things and so it's sometimes nice to know this one as well. Some of these I just remember their molar masses because I work with them so frequently. That takes a little bit of time. But we actually, so with H2O, the 2 is associated with the H. Okay, this little subscript is going to be for the H. And so we're going to have 2 times H plus oxygen. Okay, so 2 times 1 gram, which will be 2, <laughs> plus 16 grams. And that's going to give us 18 grams per mole. Again, we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules of water. Okay, so now we have a nice big one here, which is glucose. Glucose is used a lot in our biology classes, um, but I like to talk about it I'm sometimes. I hey, sis, that I'm color. recording. I'm recording a video right now. Can you for wait me? just a little bit for, for my students? Okay. I want some for my class. Okay. Okay. Six times twelve. Oops. Let's do this. Six times the mass of carbon. Plus, we're gonna do. 12 times the mass purple. of hydrogen. I want purple. Shh, sis. Purple. Plus. I watching my mom. Okay, you just got to be quiet, sis. Okay, six times oxygen. All right, so let's plug some numbers that in for this. Word. So six times 12 grams. For me? No, honey, this is for my students. But I my student one too. Plus. I lost my student one. Twelve times one gram. Uh -huh. Well, I'm sure when you take chemistry, you could use this too. Oh, there are more. <laughs> Plus six times. Purple. I lost purple, Mama. Sixteen grams. There's that one. And that one. Honey, can you please go over with Baba for a okay. little bit? Thank you. All right, so we're gonna do the math on all of this and we find out we have 180 grams per mole. Again, we have 6.022 
times 10 to the 23rd glucose molecule, so C6H12O6 molecules. All right, so that takes care of a whole bunch of these. Now we're gonna do one more, and this one gets a little bit tricky sometimes because we have parentheses. And so the rules in math and the rules in chemistry, well, they're not really any different. So if you were to have a two outside of something in parentheses in math, we would multiply it times the things that are in the parentheses. It's the same thing we do in chemistry. We call that term sometimes to distribute, and so we're going to take this two outside of here and we're gonna distribute it to everything inside. So we're gonna multiply it by the N and by the O, and so that's gonna give us our total. So we're gonna have magnesium plus we're gonna have two times nitrogen plus three times two. So since there's a three for oxygen, we have to multiply the two times the three, and that's gonna give us six, oops, let me color code that again, six times oxygen. Okay, so we're gonna multiply or distribute those that value of two, okay? So then we just go ahead and put in our numbers. So we have magnesium, which I believe is 24. I should have looked at that one more time. I don't have a second screen here. <laughs> Two times 14 grams for nitrogen. Plus six times 16 grams. Okay, uh, I don't have my calculator up, so I'd have to do this in, let me see if I can find my calculator. It's not there, let me grab it really quick. I don't, there we go. Oops. All right. So 24 plus 28 plus, I'll put it in parentheses, six times 16 and we get, oh, I'm in exponential notation. Let me take it out of that. I can do the switch around on that, but um, so that's gonna be 148 grams. Let's see if it'll, no, it won't do that. That's all right. So we have 148 grams per mole. Now in this case, this is actually an ionic compound, so I know everything else has been molecules, but we have 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd formula units for an ionic compound um, of magnesium nitrate, NO32. I hope that was helpful for you and we have practice problems we can